In this video, we're going to take a look at the areas of regions bounded by polar curves. So basically, our problem is we've got some sort of polar curve, that is to say, r is given as some function of theta, and we want to figure out what is the area of a particular sector. So we want everything between angle A and angle B, so this red sector, and we want to figure out what is the area of that red sector. So Calculus is a study of things that are changing, and we do it by taking a limit of things that don't change. So we want to look, we're going to start off by looking at the case where r equals constant. In that case, it's easy as pi, because it is a pi. Okay, imagine you're being served pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, and somebody cuts you a slice, you know, cuts you a slice of pi, and that slice has angle delta theta, and you want to figure out what is the area of your pumpkin pie. Well, you know that the area of the entire pie is pi r squared, and the area of your slice, well, it's a fraction delta theta over 2 pi of the entire thing. If you had angle 360 degrees, you'd have the entire pie. If it's a uh, if it's half that, you have half the pie. If it's a quarter of that, it's a quarter of the pie. So it's this fraction of the pie. And the whole pie has area pi r squared. So you cancel. And you get the area of your slice is r squared over 2 times your angle. It's proportional to your angle. It's proportional to the radius squared. Okay, that's what we do when things are constant. What if we do what do we do if things aren't constant? So here we have our region. And the basic idea of how you get any kind of bulk quantity in calculus is you chop it into pieces. You chop things into pieces, you estimate the size of each piece, you add up the pieces, and then you take a limit. And lo and behold, that limit becomes the limit of sums is an integral. So in this case, going to chop into pieces by breaking the angles you know, by breaking the interval from A to B you pick angles from A to B and you break that interval up into n pieces and each of those pieces gives you a little slice now the slices aren't exactly wedges of circles. They're not exactly pi slices. But if you pick, if you cut things very small, the error is very small. Just like we used rectangles to figure out the area under a curve, we're using pi slices to figure out the area inside of a curve. So our total area is the sum of the areas of the individual slices. Each slice has area radius, that's f of theta squared times delta theta over 2, approximately, because it's not exactly a pi wedge. And when you take the limit of this sum, pop, out comes an integral. That's what integrals are. Integrals are limits of sums. And so, since you're summing 1 half f squared, you integrate 1 half f squared. So there is the formula for the area inside of the curve. So let's do an example. Let's look at the cardioid. I'm the cardioid r equals 1 plus sine theta. And we're, gonna, we're interested in the portion of that that's in the first quadrant. So this shaded region, the red region, well, that goes from theta equals 0 up to theta equals pi over 2. So we integrate. from 0 to pi over 2. And what do we integrate? We integrate the radius squared. And then we multiply the whole thing by half. Radius squared, well, you just multiply it out. And then you use a double angle formula. Sine squared theta is 1 half of 1 minus cosine theta. And now we know how to integrate each term. And out pops the answer. That's it.